Hello everyone, I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. This is Steve, and I know this is long overdue, but I'm, based on somebody's um, feedback here recently, I decided to find time, or at least a lot of time, to working on this uh, Commodore 64 project or game, if you will. I had to spend the entire day <laughs> rearranging a lot of the code, unfortunately, and I'm going to show that to you now, so I'm going to hide myself. So, we're still using CBM PRG Studio here, and I had to go and create a new file here because I've had so much trouble with the raster interrupts. So anyways, I'll run it and I'll explain it here in just a minute. Now there are some occasional times where it will crash. That's because of the unpredictable raster interrupts. But it seems to be running a lot more smoother now too. So I can sit there and move over. Now watch, as I'm moving over here, you don't see anything occurring, but eventually you're going to see a little alien moving across. And he's part of the raster intro. The problem is, as soon as you let go of the joystick, I mean, as soon as you move the joystick, he stops moving. So it seems like the joystick is, is um, turning off the interrupt somewhere. So I need to look into that. <coughs> so he'll pop in there. There he is. He's not animated because I need to go back in and fix the animation. I had shut that off because I had too many problems. Apparently, if you make a raster interrupt routine too big, it starts crashing because it runs by so many clock cycles. So, I'll try to explain that later as I go forward because I got some um, information I wanted to share with you. Stuff I've been studying about raster interrupts and everything. So, it's really helped me understand and get a better picture of them because before that I just couldn't get anything to work until I finally took the time and really digested it. But anyways, just to show you, see, it seems to be like this, it's a little bit more smoother now too. I mean, it's still a little flickering, but it's not really, you know, jerking like it was before because it's set up in a, a, a raster now, so it's running a lot more smoother. And I'm pretty happy with that. <coughs> As I said, you're still going to see the jerkiness. That's just because of the scan lines. Now, it's also got the scrolling up and down, but it's not working right now because I changed the whole way I was trying to design it. As I mentioned before, when he moves left and right, as soon as you move up and down, the screen still stays in position at the horizontal. So if I, I wanted to fix that by moving everything to zero pace, so you'll see if I move down here, <coughs> while it does work, it's kind of garbled right now because I, I have to fix it. And if I move up, of course, it wants to crash. I had the upper working earlier, but anyways, let me just show you to save some time here. So this is what I've done. Um, <coughs> I took this, um, <coughs> excuse me, this routine uh, for raster interrupts, and I call it start bars. Basically, I used it when I first tested my first raster bars, so I just left the name in there. But anyways, what it does here is it, it's going here and it's setting up a special um, place how the interrupts are registered here. So I wanted to kind of go over some of that with you. <coughs> So the first thing I've learned, and I'll show you the website if you want to see it here. It's right here. No, no, not this one. Um, I think it's this one. Yes, yeah, this one right here. This is a great website right here. Introduction to C64 Programming Demos. I'll try to put the link in the description here. I'll enlarge it if you want to see it there. You can kind of see it now. I don't know if you can see the link or not. but. It's got some really weird, really weird um, HTML or whatever. I'll expand it here a little bit so you can kind of see it there. I don't know if that will help that or not. And a little bit too big, huh? Well. You can kind of see what it looks like anyway. I'll just shrink it here a little bit. Get 14 of you. So you can kind of see that's the link right there you're going to need to get to that website. It's got a lot of great stuff here about raster interrupts. Let me just hide this out of the way. I'm going to need this later, but I'm going to hide it for now. You can go down here and you can just click on the interrupts to get to there faster. And he starts talking about interrupts, the purpose of them, how to implement the first one. This is the one I've used. To, to model my my changes after. So if you look right here, it tells you, and 
what these lines are doing right here. So this first is set turning off the interrupts. That's what the SCI is for set interrupt. It turns off all the interrupts like the keyboard, uh, sprite collisions, and anything else that's occurring. Um, this this I/O and all that that occurs when you um, <coughs> first run on emulator or you turn on your Commodore 64. The next thing it's doing is it's turning off the CIA one and two interrupts so that we can actually use them. And then after that, where um, I had um, <coughs> I'm trying not to scroll down, so I, I wrote down most of this here. So I'm just gonna kind of um, explain what this is. So we're setting up these um, interrupts right here, and um, this is um, basically a way of initializing. Um, the only one really of important right here is this one, this uh, bit bit seven of D zero eleven, and which is actually the eighth bit of D zero twelve. And uh, maybe I'll just have to go down here and show you it anyway. So right here it talks about it. So 7F into DC, 0D, oh wait, I think I got that in myself here, let me see, right here it is, D0116, D0018, and right here it says bit 7 of D011, which is the 8th bit of D012, this is if you, if you have more than 256 raster lines that you have to initialize it, so that it recognizes um, that you can go more than 256, because the I think it's like has like 300 and some. I forget how many total, but it has like up to 300 and some different scan lines on it. And the scan lines are everything you look at. Um, let me just run the program here real quick and show you. <coughs> well, I don't really have to run it. But everything you see on this screen here, from the top corner all the way down, these are, are created by scan lines. So what it does is it takes a horizontal beam and it moves it over here. And when it gets to this side, it starts over here again and it keeps going all the way down until it gets to the bottom of the screen. But it happens so quickly that you can't actually see it. And um, based on what I learned here, this actually occurs uh, 50 times per second. So it's pretty dang fast. When, it, when it's uh, creating the raster lines, so. So the next thing here is the, um, turning on and activating the, ACE, the CIA1 interrupts, because here we turn them off and here we'll turn them on so we can reuse them here. And this um, ASL D019 to go down here again. Uh, let's see here. And it's right here. Yeah, ASL D. So this is um, the incrementing of D019. I think it's 53266. Let me look it up here. Which is the um, current raster line, read line, write line to compare for raster IRQ. So it's what keeps track of uh, the scan beam as it's moving up and down the screen there. It's called the interrupt vector. You can see it right here. So this is a, gr a great tutorial, by the way. And this is just uh, their example of what they're doing here. But here's what you do is you assail it or you increment it. And then that's how you figure out what scan line it's on. Which is right here, of course. And then once you go into that, you just kind of exit the interrupt. And then what they did here, I did, I kind of skipped over this, but this is setting the low and the byte of your interrupt routine. So this is the interrupt routine that flashes the border or it changes 50, location 53280, which, let's pull this up. Oh, guess I have to, there it is. So the border is just right here and it changes the border color. So that's what their example does. But I, I got mine obviously, you know, controlling the sprites and the scrolling and everything else. So the most important thing you want to do is you want to restore the registers before you leave. I had a lot of problems with this before because I kept throwing a CLI in here and CLI seems to crash it. So I removed the clear from interrupt and I just used RTI in my code and it seems to work really fine now. But that's just a basic example of how, I mean, to create an interrupt. So essentially here you're just activating, you're turning off CIA, 
or set the interrupt uh, um, at turning off CAA and then you're um, setting these uh, little bits here in the registers for D012 and um, the most important thing is you're setting the raster interrupt here for the high and the low bytes which they call the, um, the low part address of the interrupt handler and the high part in address of the inter interrupt handler and then that actually activates the routine in your code and right here they're actually using the interrupts this is what sets them and starts them and this is what's getting the scan line so we're figuring out where we are here and jump in the loop this is important too you want to implement in a loop after you're done otherwise it'll crash into your code so in my example um, I took and imported over a lot of their stuff here and I found some other um, stuff online that I wanted to show you too um, I think I might have it over here Oh, actually, you know what it was right over here. I downloaded the source code for um, Metal Warrior, which is what I, I hope to make something very similar to the same effects and rasters and everything that's used in this. It, it's a pretty cool game. If those who don't know what it is, you can just, I already have it running up here in a, a video here somewhere. Where is it at? Maybe I closed it. Let's see. Oh, it's right here. So, it's got some cool music and everything. This is Metal Warrior. So you can see the. I'm going to turn down the music a little bit here. You can see how it's, it's used implementing the scrolling. This is all done by rasters, of course. And everything is fine movement because they're keeping track of the clock cycles and they're, they're very accurately predicting or determining what they are. That's how they're able to get the, the smooth movement and everything. So. And this one is new. they're using it a little bit faster so they kind of move the screen a little bit over a little faster too. And there's a scrolling going up and down. Look, there's also no um, no garbage at the top or the bottom of the screen. So I think this game is really well done. You know, I mean, and music is just incredible. The effects, animation, and everything. But yeah, you can kind of see. Um, that's essentially, and what I was going to show you that for is I took some of the code from this uh, downloaded and I just kind of copied it over here in the WordPad to kind of show you this is what I've been modeling after so let's go back over to my code here for example and it took a little bit of time but I had to go through every single thing here to figure out where all the rasters are at and how they were doing them and one of the things the most important things I, I came to realize is um, so I can find it here let just start at the top again here is the rasters themselves they're saving the, um, the registers the X Y and the accumulator registers because if you don't save those and restore those which they use right here in save A save X and save Y you your encounter a lot of crashes which I did for the longest time I could not figure out why my game was always crashing it was driving me nuts and I was just ready to you know can it the whole thing is the rasters are just the main the heart of the program but anyways, I was able to get a lot of that working to an, to an extent, that is, and I'm still working on it. So I'm pretty thrilled with that. So copying it over here, so that's what I did is I kind of, you know, copied some of the um, examples they have from here in the editor program. And hopefully you can follow this. So basically it's very similar to what I showed you earlier. This is actually setting the, um, the CIA1 interrupts here. This is enabling my interrupt, my alien, and Annie is my alien animation. That's what gets the alien moving across the screen. And of course right here is where you set the, you save the registers right here. I could probably move this over a little bit. They kind of, kind of move all over the place here in this editor. I do it a little more cleaner there. So now you can see a little bit better. And right here is uh, capturing the line. I think this would be 0, 012. Let me see. 53266. So that's it. So right there is the line. And I started at scan line 45, which is kind of towards the top of the screen. I already shut it down. I thought I had it running. Okay, and right here um, is where I'm restoring those registers. I think that was the same example I used earlier. So. The most important thing is once I've gone through this, 
you want to make sure um, you activate the second interrupt too. So at the very end, we're RT and I here, so returning from the interrupt, but we'll go down to Alien Annie and I'll show you where it gets the first set right here. So this is going to look very similar to what's over here. So here we're storing, we're, um, we're loading them. Well, actually, I'm sorry, it'll be down here, right here. So here we're saving them. So you can see I got save A, save X, save A, save X, save Y. We're clearing. I use this TAX and the TAY because I ran into some problems with the stack. So I left those up there for now. So right here is we're incrementing the lines on the screen to figure out which line. I think that's the, the line one. Let me see. Sorry guys, I totally don't have them all memorized yet, but 53273 and looking at my mapping book here. It's the Vic register flag register, so I'm not even sure if I even need that one in this one. Anyways, it's in there. So right here I'm kind of incrementing through the border color. Just to show you how the border, I think it changes the border color. Let me see. Just wait, I'm gonna find out. It changes it right there. You can kind of see it flashing on and off. So, the next thing we do is we're setting our raster. We're jumping to the subverting our raster aliens. Just a new uh, label I created here and replacing it to what Alien Annie is doing. So, this kind of sets off. Once the interrupt is fired, it goes down here. And this, of course, exits this interrupt, the first interrupt. This is uh, taking care of the subroutine for our first interrupt, which is our alien. This I used right here to make sure that the alien is appearing on the screen. And I'll show you where, what, what I've done with this. As you saw me earlier when I moved them on the screen. Let me just pull that back up here again. Actually, I'll probably reset it, I just realized. To demonstrate this example. So, what I'm talking about here is... As I'm moving here, you don't see the alien appearing yet, and this is what this uh, variable, uh, this uh, label for uh, show alien is doing. So right here it's waiting until he reaches a certain position, and then once it's at one, right here, this is when it gets fired. And right there he is. So, where did I do that? I did that somewhere farther down in the program. Let's put that over there for now. So, down here, actually this is, this is where it's comparing it at, right here. I think I, I skipped over this part, didn't I? I was probably on the wrong section, but anyways, this is what it's doing. It's checking to see if it's a 1, and as soon as it's a 1, and it's going to allow you to increment the 53252, which is the horizontal position for the alien. So I'll go down here in the code and show you where I did it. It's farther down here. That's, I think that's where I was earlier. Let me see. right here actually I'm sorry so right here it's in the pixel scroll right so that means when he's moving over and the screen is pixel scrolling right here it's checking a variable called player distance which is incrementing you can see right down here where's it at right here it's incrementing right above and as it's incrementing it's keeping track of what's in that value based on what's in this um this compare table alien to move flag let me pull that up real quick here So right here you see there's a 110 in it, so it's waiting until he reaches position 110, and then once he's at position 110, according to this, it's going to uh, instantly activate that flag to allow the alien to start moving. And this right here is going to skip over it, so if it's less, or branch carry has not yet been set, then it's less than, it's going to skip over him right here so you'll never see it increment it'll never activate this uh, one here so that's what gets the alien moving 
And let's see, next here, I think that's pretty much it for the alien. That's just the alien routine. So let me move on to the joystick next. So after we're done with the alien routine, we want to instantly move into the next scan line, which I just set at 48 here, because the first one is at hex 34, which is, I believe, 52. And I don't know why, actually, I should I should even have this as redundant code here, so move that. So right here, so if it's at 54, and remember that's where that value is checking for the, the interrupt raster line. Then we're going to activate our next routine, which is the joystick, which allows the joystick to move. So if we go to joyous T, right here. This is where we do our joystick, and this is where we draw this um, this raster line at the bottom here. So we got a couple different rasters going on here, because now we got the raster down here. We got the alien raster. You can kind of see what's going on. We got the scrolling raster, sort of. So basically that's what's going on right there, and this is all the same code I had before. This just draws the, the, um, the scan lines down here, and it sets the character set to 53272 based on wherever, I think it's right here, right here, 21, which is the default settings for the Commodore 64, which means a character set that hasn't yet been initialized, and this one appears initialized, of course. So this is redefined, and this one is not. But these are two different lines occurring on your screen simultaneously. So, anyways, um, and this is just a joystick routine. I showed this before, so I'm not going to go over all this code, but it just moves the joystick up, down, blah, blah, blah. So, once we're done with this, and we've gone into the joystick routine, and we're no longer moving the joystick, this is where the alien gets fired back. And this might be where that alien is delaying somewhere. So I probably need to put this outside of the code here, I realize. Otherwise, it's going to wait until... He moves the joystick before the alien, you know, can start moving. And if you see here, if I, as soon as I start moving, he freezes. That's because the joystick is moving, and it's skipping over this. So if I probably put this above here, maybe, that might do it too. But maybe I'll try that later. But anyways, that's um, essentially it. And what this does is it restores the first raster interrupt, which was Alien Annie, which we saw earlier. So it basically just goes back to alien joystick, alien joystick, alien joystick, and allows you to do both at the same time. Well, not technically at the same time, but they're kind of, you know, one over the other. So I'm just real curious to see if I move that code, if it would actually work. Well, I got, actually, I got to leave that RTI in here. I can't really do anything with that. Let's just cut this for a second and see if I stuck it up here, maybe. Out of curiosity. See if it works. If not, it's still work in progress. Oops, I got some errors already. Got a branch range. Not sure why that happened. Oh, this is going too far down. There's too much of a branch just jump. I think it's jumping up and down, so it's not. So I'll probably have to set this code somewhere else. Maybe I could just set it like in a, a routine outside of here somewhere. Hopefully that doesn't crash it. Let me see if that'll still give me errors. It's still gonna give me errors. So I have to do some reorganizing of my code, unfortunately, for it to work. Because the branches are, are just trying to jump too far ahead and too far down or whatever. So. So the move player down is going too far down, which is basically all the way down here. It's right underneath the right and the left, so it's going past 255, and it's it's too far out of range. So I need to, what I did originally did is I just set um, jump locations for each of them. Actually, I got that right here. So move down, move up. I wonder why that one is not working. This is ENVPDN. Maybe that is that one down here. MVDN, MV up. Although these are too far away. Really? Why really? oh, are these too far away? I should probably move them down. They're probably too far up here. So, before I lose this, let's put this back here. Let's get, stick this back in here. I guess you get a little code example here. Um, I'm going to try moving these down a little bit. See if that works. Uh, 
Oh, there's one more left still. MVP up. I'll bet I don't have that one set. <clears throat> yeah, I do. MVP up. Oh boy, that brain's just out of range too. You're kidding me. I don't really have much else room here. Because it's saying it's jumping too far up here. Can't go down here, be too far down. Too far up. So I'll have to do some reorganization with that. But if I get that working, then I'll show you some other videos. So I'm not going to waste a whole lot of time on it. But yeah, I just wanted to show you that. Um, not to make this video too long. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video, you know. Um, but yeah, you know, it's back on track and I'm just actually I'm gonna have to reorganize this again. I put it back the way it was. So yeah, please uh, like and subscribe to this channel if you like this information, you know. And I hope this was informative enough for you. Um, you can see um, I'm not yet giving up. I just, I figured probably what I'll do is I'll set my Saturdays or something. And just, you know, set those as um, a time apart for um, doing some coding. Because I'm still working on the, the Visual Studio stuff too. So I can hopefully get back into software development. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, and this is Steve Morrow signing off. Thanks for watching guys.